Glen Lyon is one of the longest and most beautiful in Scotland, but it's very much a working glen, a mixture of farming, stalking and tourism. Being so far from the national grid meant that the landowners here adopted micro-hydroelectric schemes a hundred years ago, long before the post-war development of large-scale dams and turbine halls. Today, that heritage is being renewed. There are no fewer than seven projects under development led by Green Highland Renewables in Aberfeldy. These are very long-term investments um, going into, what, two or three generations from now. What we are doing here will bring employment, we will let contracts. As you see, these are local firms. Most of these schemes are built by local people. There's plenty of skill uh, in the local area to do that. And again, across Scotland, we can, we can roll that out. The first three projects have now started. Between them, they'll generate well over a megawatt of power. And it all starts here, with a burn high above the glen. The water will be partly dammed by a weir and diverted down to a micro power station at the foot of the hill. This is the, where the, the water starts going into the, into the hydro scheme. So it goes in from, from a weir, it goes into the pipe. That's the pipeline. They're drilling rock at the moment so that we can get a nice, nice gradient on the pipeline. Uh, the intakes below us there, where that's the water, comes from the burn into the pipeline and ends up down at the power station. There are tight restrictions on what they're allowed to do here. The intake is a structure which has got, you can have what we call washover screens so that the water goes over the top and then drops into the pipeline. Uh, any excess water continues down, down the burn and there's also, a, by law, we have to maintain a certain amount of water in the burn uh, at all times. We do have to go through quite a rigorous process with the authorities but we find that we can mitigate most of the issues such as migratory fish, um, scenic issues, by burying, by putting the pipeline underground and by using very small and, and, and low, low weirs faced with, with natural stone. And that's what we aim to do. We, we, we don't want to get in the way of, of, of spoiling the countryside. We believe we're good stewards. These are very expensive projects, not least because of the need to have a long connection, buried underground for environmental and other reasons, to the national grid. But they will be able to recover some of that by selling power to the grid. It was um, close to 2.5 million, so you're looking at significant sums per kilometre. And that was, uh, we, we could have done it more cheaply by doing it overhead, but because this is a national scenic area, we felt as a group of people uh, with a long-term interest in this glen. We've, all the families have been here for, for many, many, many years, some over a century, that we should do this properly. Seven schemes made it viable. So this is, this is one of seven, and the, they vary from about 600 to 1.2 or 1,200 kilowatts. It's much, much greater than any needs for energy in the glen. It probably has the capacity, this one scheme has the capacity of supplying maybe half of Aberfeldy's needs, for example. Although there are scars on the hillside at the moment, they'll quickly disappear, as will the underground power stations. This is all that can be seen of one completed earlier this year. And acquiring this expertise means they can sell it to other parts of the country. Green Highlands just signed a long-term deal with the Forestry Commission to develop similar schemes in the far north and west of the country.